Hey everyone, I've been playing Gran Turismo a ton over the past few days and I'm working on a big in-depth review, but first I wanted to make a video about the microtransaction controversy. I was initially going to make a first impressions video along with this, but I still have some mixed feelings on certain things and until I really finish the game, I don't want to say anything because I'm still kind of formulating my opinion on, on certain aspects of the game. There are some things that I think are very well done and other things that could have used a bit more improvement. So I'll be going over all of that in my main review. So in regards to the microtransaction controversy, if you haven't heard, there's actually kind of a few issues here. First of all, the game is more expensive than it used to be. The PlayStation 5 version is $70 now instead of the 60. So it, this is a full price game. And let's keep that in mind. Now, Gran Turismo Sport also had some pretty bad microtransactions. You could buy, it was extremely grindy, and you could basically buy any car for between like 99 cents to $3, which was ridiculous considering the amount of cars and how long it took to get them. But I mean, if you really did want to get a car, it would be only $3. That is no longer the case, as they have exponentially increased how much it costs to buy a car. So, first off, they disabled the microtransactions while review outlets, or at least the traditional review outlets, were reviewing the game. So very few reviews actually have the microtransaction issue in it. I have seen a few reviews that have kind of updated it, or the ones that kind of came in late did mention it briefly, but a lot of the main ones didn't mention it. And, you know, a lot of the major review outlets wouldn't even mention microtransactions, no matter how bad they are in any game. So even if they were in the game, you know, it might have not made a difference, but at the very least, it is very bad optics. We've seen uh, other companies like Activision Blizzard has done this. They usually waited a few weeks before implementing them, um, but in this case, they had the microtransactions turned off, and then they turned them on the second the game went live. So, And the reviews were in, uh, I think, two days before the game went live, so yeah, that, that's pretty blatant what they were trying to do there you know, making sure that the microtransactions were not mentioned in the main reviews. Uh, the second issue is that the microtransactions, which basically you can buy, instead of being able to buy cars, you can buy credits in the game. Uh, and uh, they have a couple different packs that you can get. It's basically like um, a free-to-play mobile game. I mean, it is it actually is exactly like a free-to-play mobile game. The prices and the way you buy your credits. So the credits are 100,000 credits for $2.50, 250,000 credits for $5, 750,000 credits for $10, or 2 million credits for $20. Those are insane prices right there. And you probably see the problem is that there's no million dollar option. And a lot of cars in Gran Turismo 7 cost a million dollars exactly. So. And I'm not saying anyone should buy these microtransactions, it should not support them. And, and I'm going to talk about this in a minute about who they uh, target after we go over the third problem. Is that the game is really grindy. It, it, it takes a very, very long time to afford these expensive cars. I mean, I'm almost 18 hours in. I've come in first place almost every race. I've gotten the, the clean race bonus, which gives you 50% uh, extra winnings. And I'm only, I think I have like $1.2 million uh, saved up. I actually, no, I actually only have 800000 because I, 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 I made a little bit more, but I bought one car. I bought one car, basically. I bought a $500,000 car. Other than that, I bought a, um, a Raptor for, I think it was 50000 And then it, I haven't bought anything. It's been just all upgrades. And I'm almost done with the cafe menu, which is basically the main single player. And I've done a lot of license tests, too. It's not like I haven't played the game. Like, I've gone through a lot, and I, I mean, I can buy... I, I think I'm close to being able to buy one $1 million car, because I did buy that $500,000 car, or I could buy a couple other cars if I wanted, but the game does reward you with cars, but they're all, like, really cheap ones, and then you have to upgrade them, too, and the upgrades are insanely priced. So, that's, that's the problem, because uh, not only are the cars really expensive, but you constantly need to be upgrading them, especially if you want to be competitive in online races, and uh, you can't just tune your car uh, like you could in sport. You actually have to buy specific upgrades that allow you to tune the settings, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but sometimes those, like, you can buy upgrades to just uh, upgrade your actual, like, car's power level, basically, they call it performance points. 
but then you also have to buy separate upgrades outside of that that actually allow you to tune it. Some of them, the up higher, like the, if you buy the best springs, that does allow you to tune the suspension. But in other cases, you can't tune everything unless you buy like a specific upgrade just to be able to tune something. Just extremely grindy. Things are very expensive, and it's pretty clear that they want to force people who don't have a lot of time to play into buying these microtransactions. Like, I'm going to say, someone like me, who is reviewing the game, who is a big racing game fan, is probably going to play the game a lot. I'm going to be fine. I'll eventually, you know, grind the money for the specific cars I want. I'll be pretty annoyed, and it will kind of reduce the amount of fun I have in the game, but I will eventually get the few cars that I, you know, really, really want. Um, I won't be able to probably get every car that I want, but I'll be able to get at least some of them, depending on, you know, how much I end up playing after I, I review, which I'm, I probably will be playing a good amount, but I, I'm going to be needing to grinding a lot. Now, obviously, going through the story is probably not the most efficient way to earn money, but you should be getting more than you do get during the story. I'm sure there's a... Once I go through, I might even make a guide to find, like, the best race and the best way to grind money in the most efficient way, uh, but I still have to go through the rest of the game before I can do that. So this really does seem to be trying to target and hook those whales. And not only whales, because, you know, there's people who are just going to buy this. They don't want to grind. They just want to get all the best cars in the game right away. And they'll just buy these microtransactions. That's really who they want to support. And then you also have people who might really enjoy the game, but they only have, you know, four or five hours a week to play or, or even less. You know, they might have kids uh, that they're raising and they might only have a few hours to play here and there. They might not have time to grind for their favorite, you know, Ferrari or, or Lamborghini that's like a million dollars or even like there was one Ferrari, uh, I forget which one it is, but it's like 3.3 million credits. I mean, so if you did want to buy that, you couldn't just buy that many credits. You'd have to buy two, two million packs, which would be $40 for one car. You'd have 7,000, 700,000 credits left over, but still $40 for one car. If you wanted to get two of them, you would need to spend $80, which is more than the PlayStation 5 version of the game cost. It's insane. Now, granted, there shouldn't be any microtransactions in the game at all. This is a full-priced $70 game. This is more expensive than it honestly really should be. I honestly I don't think that price hike was justified. I don't think there's... I'll go with this more in review, but I think the $10 price hike in general, I'm, I'm not a big fan of. I don't think it really is justified, but... Still, it's a $70 game, and they have these free-to-play microtransactions, and it's pretty clear that they designed the game in such a way to make people want to buy them. And obviously, it's not going to affect everyone. You know, people who play the game a lot are probably going to be able to get the cars in one. Although, I know they've done studies. People who play games more are more likely to buy microtransactions. You know, at a certain point, I guess, you know, people might get frustrated and just not want to grind the same race for the you know thousandth time and just want to get the car that they want to get and yeah they might drop 20 bucks to get the two million credit packs they're actually uh, going to be adding in more cars and i'm sure a lot of the cars they add in are going to be very expensive and then there's also the legendary cars which can cost between 150,000 credits and 20 million credits which i guess the 20 million credits is actually a hard cap for your wallet in Gran Turismo 7, so even if you did buy all the cars and wanted to, you know, buy them as they come out with updates, you actually have a hard cap on your wallet, which seems to be done on purpose. I guess this was done in, in Gran Turismo Sport as well, um, and I, I can't imagine how long it takes to grind 20 million credits, even if you're doing it efficiently. I mean, I'm sure that's going to take a significant amount of time. So they also have the roulette tickets. I I'm not joking. I've won one car. It was... Um, a Hellcat safety car and everything else I've won two parts for two cars that I did not own yeah so you can basically win in, in every roulette instead of you know getting a random car every day which was a problem before because you could get doubles and you couldn't sell them but in, in sport but now you can either get a car um, you can get a part for a random car and there's over 420 cars in it so you could get a part for a car that you don't own and might never have enough money to buy <laughs> Uh, you can also win tickets for the privilege to buy a really expensive car. You can't even buy the expensive cars right off the bat. You actually have to win a ticket and wait, wait, basically waste your roulette ticket to get another ticket 
so you have the privilege to buy an extremely expensive car, and it's actually on a timer, a real-world timer. It seems like it's a year from what I've seen. I've won two tickets, and it looks like it's a one-year timer on them. So, I mean, it's a long time, but it does seem like it might be there to pressure people who might not play the game as much and might pick it up only every so often into buying them. It just seems like there's so many little things in there to, to pressure people and do it. And then you can also win money, and they have different sums. I, I'm kidding you not. Other than the one time I won the car, I've won two parts, and I've won two tickets. Every single time, I've won the smallest amount of money, except for one time, which was 20,000 credits, which is less than you get from winning a race. Every other time, it's been the 5,000 credits, or the 2,000 credits, because it depends on the... Um, there's different tiers of roulette tickets. And it appears from the daily workout... I've gone between one and four star roulette tickets. I guess the daily workout gives you a random tier one because I got a tier four uh, yesterday. Then today I got a tier one roulette ticket and I won 2000 credits from it. I, I mean, it's like insulting. I mean, that's, I mean, even a cheap car, that's, I mean, it, it doesn't even like pay for most upgrades. It's insane. So it's pretty clear that these were put in kind of maliciously in order to get hook whales and uh, the frustrated players who might not have enough time to grind for the money to buy the cars uh, into buying them. Obviously, most people aren't going to get them, but it's it's going to frustrate a lot of people. And actually, if you look at the uh, the Metacritic, I was pretty shocked because it, it seems like people kind of just ignore microtransactions now, which is kind of sad. Not in this case. I mean, I was shocked. The PlayStation 4 version of Gran Turismo 7 is only a 0.2 user score higher than it was for GT Sport, which is just insane. Oh, actually, no, it's only 0.1 higher. It's actually gone down since I checked last night. People are not happy. Uh, so it's a 6.2 user score for PlayStation 4. It's a 6.9 uh, for PlayStation 5. It seems like most people are... There's a lot of other issues, I think, that people are not liking so much about some of the mechanics and uh, the always online thing really seems to be a point of contention for a lot of people and I kind of don't blame them. But the microtransactions is a huge problem for a lot of people and I, I don't blame them. I don't know what Sony's thinking here. I, well, I know what they're thinking. They know they can get extra money. But the thing is, so GT Sport came out in 2017. Racing games have exploded in popularity in the past few years, especially simulation racing. I mean, there definitely was some competition back in 2017, but it's not like now. There are a lot of really, really good simulation racing games and a lot of really good, you know, arcade racing games and ones that are kind of like in the middle between sim and, and, and arcade. There is a lot of competition. If you this is not the time to really like anger your user base because there are plenty of other options for them, really, really good options for them to play. Now, Grand Turismo does offer something a little different than most other games offer, and I think that's why a lot of people like it so much. Um, so the big thing now is um, see what Microsoft does with um, Forza Motorsport 8. If I were them, I would... I mean, I know that they have their car pass and expansions and stuff, so, I mean, they're not perfect either. Although I don't mind their stuff as much as the, these microtransactions. Because, like, in Forza Horizon 5, they shower you with cars, and it's, like, money, and I never have felt like I had any problem, as long as I was playing the game, I never felt like I had any problem getting the things I wanted, and then, and more, like, it just constantly rewarded you, which was really fun, it's like, oh, we designed all these really great cars in the game, why don't you have fun and drive them all, instead of um, being really stingy with it, or at least on the high end of cars, they, they do reward you with a lot of the, like, the really low-end, uh, cheaper cars, which some are nice, but I've only gotten, like, one nice car. Uh, I got the um, Supra racing car, and oh my god, that thing is freaking amazing. But other than that, it's, it's been really, like, mostly low-end cars I've gotten. Some some are nice, and, and some, I, I don't know, it really depends, but I'll go into it more in my full review. But I don't like this microtunes action thing. It, it's kind of scummy, and um, it, it just kind of, like, puts this huge, like, all this negativity on the game that it just doesn't need. It's a full-price game. Maybe if they really want to do, like, um, obviously they should have, you know, released more free cars over time, but I don't know, do like a $10 car pass or, so pass or something in, in like a couple months. Or, or basically, or maybe do like, um, I don't know, an, an expansion? Uh, I mean, I know I think they did that with in, in Sport. Uh, they had the Lewis Hamilton time trials or something like that. I, I mean, I don't know. I don't want it to be like, you don't want to obviously split the user base with, 
uh, having different tracks and stuff for the online portion, but there are better ways they could have gone about this. And this game is going to sell really well. It's Gran Turismo. Even GT Sport, which didn't sell as much as some of the older games, still sold like over 8 million copies. Even like GT5 and 6 sold... I think they sold between like 5 and 6 million copies. They still sold a lot of copies. They're going to make their money back and then some for this game. So uh, it just it just sucks to see it. It's kind of sad and uh, there's really no reason for it. So like I said, I just wanted to do this video before I did my full review. I am working on that. I, uh, I'm, like I said, I'm almost done with a cafe menu. I think I need to do two or three more of them. And then uh, I have done ha about half the license tests. I want to go through all those and, and the missions and... Uh, I really need to test out more cars before I can really formulate my opinion because I've mostly only tested out really like the, the kind of low-end cars and I, I really haven't tried out many high-end cars so I really need to I guess grind like crazy so I can get a few so I can you know test them out and really see if this game's worth people buying. Anyways if you uh, bought the game or if you're thinking about buying it is this something that I mean, are the microtransactions stopping you from buying it? Let me know down in the comments or how do you feel about it if you did buy it? If you did buy it, let me know if you're enjoying it or not. I've definitely, like I said, there's things that I think are really great about the game, and then there's other things that have really used them while work. Uh, obviously, it's going to be kind of a live service game, so things are going to be updated over time. I think they did that with Sport, and they've already come out and like done like a huge list of things that they're going to fix in the game and, and change and add. So, I mean, this is basically a live service at this point. I mean, it's always online. It, it's, it is a live service at this point, so... And we have microtransactions in it too. So anyways, um, that review should be up over the next few, sometime in the next few days. I want to really make sure I'm pretty thorough with it. So I mean, I'm going to probably spend a bit more time with it. So the review might be out at the end of this week, maybe. Uh, I'll have to see. Um, but anyways, thank you so much for watching. If you're not subscribed, make sure to hit that subscribe button and uh, like the video. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you all in the next video.